Welcome. Welcome to the plasma physics course of TPFL. Under which condition is a uh, standard fluid in equilibrium? That is, uh, under which condition the properties of uh, a fluid non varying time? Well, this typically happens when there is a balance between the gravitational force and the forces due to the pressure. In plasmas, things are uh, much more complicated because plasmas are subject to electric and magnetic fields that they have themselves generated. Goal of the present lecture is to study equilibria in plasmas. This is an extremely important subject because uh, if you want to confine a plasma, this plasma has to be in equilibrium. We will approach this uh, issue within the uh, ideal MHD model. So the first thing that we will do in this module will be to derive the equation that describes uh, equilibrium in plasma within the ideal MHD model. Then uh, we will analyze in the details the most important equation that describes an equilibrium, that is the force balance equilibrium. We will look at two different kinds of uh, equilibria that can be present in plasma, the force free and the force balance equilibria. And finally, I will talk about two examples of uh, MHD equilibria, the Z pinch and the theta pinch. So let's derive together the equations that describe the uh, plasma equilibrium in within a MHD model. I will start by recalling the MHD equation and then we will uh, simplify those to look at the uh, uh, equilibrium situation. The equations for uh, uh, the MHD model are the continuity equation, which states that the uh, mass density varies because of the plasma flow. The momentum equation which states that the fluid moves because of the J cross B and the grad B forces. Ohm's law that it say states that the sum of the electric field plus the V cross B terms is equal to eta J, which in the ideal limit where the plasma resistivity is equal to zero is equal to zero. Then a closure equation. And then the equations for the field, Maxwell equations, Carl of E equal to minus dB over dt, Ampere's law, and divergence of P equal to zero. From this equation, we want to derive the equations that describe the static equilibrium. That is, we want to reduce this equation to the limit where the property of the plasmas do not vary in time, that is dt d over dt equal to zero, equilibrium in other terms, and we will look at the case of static equilibrium, that is uh, the case where uh, the velocity of the plasma is equal to zero. Uh, let me say uh, that equilibria that are not static, where an equilibrium flow is present, are very interesting. However, for sake of simplicity for this course, we will focus our attention only on the simpler static equilibria. Within uh, this hypothesis, we observe uh, for the continuity equation that uh, because of d over dt equal to zero, t goes to zero, and as v is equal to zero, this term goes to zero. So the continuity equation basically reduces in the static uh, equilibrium condition to zero equal to zero, is always satisfied. For the momentum equation, we have that t term as v is equal to zero drops. And therefore, the momentum equation becomes a 
force balance equation that is j cross p minus grad p equal to zero. Since the plasma velocity is equal to zero, we have also the T term is equal to zero. Therefore, for a static ideal MHD equilibrium, we have that T electric field has to be equal to zero. In the hypothesis of d over dt equal to zero and v equal to zero, t term goes to zero. So it becomes zero equal to zero. Then as the electric field is equal to zero, t is equal to zero. And on the other end, uh, d, dt, d over dt equal to zero implies that t is equal to zero. This equation has to be kept. as well as uh, the divergence of p equal to zero. These are the equation that gives uh, the condition for a static M ideal MHD equilibrium. Well, taking out the fact that E has to be equal to zero, the three uh, most important equations to describe the equilibrium are the first one, the force balance equation, Ampere's law, and divergence of p equal to zero. Let's now make a couple of observations on probably the most important equation to describe the plasma equilibrium. The first balance equation, j cross p equal to grad p. The first observation that I would like to make is the following one. If uh, we take the product, the scalar product between b and the uh, gradient of the pressure, which according to the force balance equation is given by b dot j cross b. Well, you find that as j cross b is perpendicular to b, this is equal to zero. At the same time, if one tries to evaluate j dot grad p, one finds that this is also equal to zero. Therefore, if we have a surface uh, with uh, of constant pressure, an isobaric surface, along which P is constant, and therefore with respect to which the grad P vector is perpendicular, we find that B and J have to be perpendicular to grad P, and therefore they have to be tangent the, to the surface. B and J are tangential to the P equal to constant surface, the so-called isobaric surfaces. The second observation that I would like to make comes from putting together the force balance equation and the Ampere's law. By putting these two together, what we find is, uh, and more precisely by replacing the value of j in the first balance equation with the curl of b, we find that uh, 1 over mu 0 curl of b cross b is equal to the gradient of p. Now, if we try to estimate the order of magnitude of the terms that are contained in this uh, left-hand side, well, we will find that there are terms of uh, order b square divided by mu naught, then uh, distance l. If we do the same for the right hand side, we find that the terms uh, present uh, on the term present on the right hand side is of the order of pressure divided by scale length l. Uh, what is this l? It's a uh, typical scale length of the system. We are estimating here that the special derivative of the curl operator can be estimated as 1 over the typical plasma scale length, that is L. In plasma physics, we introduce an extremely important parameter, the so-called beta, plasma beta, which is the ratio between the estimate of the order of magnitude of the right-hand side of this equation 
and of the terms at the left hand side. Now, what is the typical value of this beta, of this parameter? Well, beta is found to be much, much smaller than one in typical laboratory plasmas. In these cases, in fact, the plasma is very tenuous. If you want, most of, uh, of the energy is contained in the magnetic field rather than in the plasma kinetic energy. But there are also less tenuous plasmas for which uh, beta is comparable to one, for example, in the Earth magnetosphere, where the magnetic field is uh, relatively weak. And then one can find plasmas in astrophysical systems where beta can be even larger than one. In this case, in fact, the magnetic field can be weak and most of the energy be in the form of thermal energy. Now, if uh, beta is much, much smaller than one, then at the, this term here, has to be equal to zero. Basically, the terms contained in the Karloff B cross B have to balance themselves. This is what we call force-free equilibria. Otherwise, we have that uh, the equilibrium really comes from the balance of uh, both these terms, the right and left hand side, and therefore one has that one over nu zero is equal to grad P. These are the force balanced equilibria. So let's give a look at the properties of force free equilibrium and let's give a look at an example. Actually, as uh, you will see, such a beautiful uh, structure that you can observe on the sun's surface is an example of force free equilibrium. Force free equilibrium, as we have just said, are equilibria for which uh, J cross B. which we can write in terms of the grad, uh, curl of B, thanks to Ampere's law, is equal to zero. In other terms, uh, well, force free equilibria appears when uh, the curl of B is uh, parallel to B. In this case, in fact, the vectorial product is equal to zero. Therefore, curl of B has to be equal to some function alpha scalar function times b. Well, it's interesting to give a look at what are the properties of this alpha. Now, if we evaluate the divergence of uh, the curl of b, this is equal to zero because of the properties of the curl of b of a vector. And uh, because of this equation, this is equal to the divergence of uh, alpha b. Now, if we try to evaluate the divergence of alpha b, we find that this is equal to alpha divergence of b plus b dot grad alpha. This is equal to zero because of the property of the magnetic field and therefore we arrive to the fact that b dot grad alpha is equal to zero. If uh, we consider a surface of alpha equal to constant, we will find that the gradient of alpha, which is perpendicular to this surface, has to be perpendicular to B, and therefore B has to be tangential to the alpha equal to constant plane. A demonstration similar to the one I just did will be used in the exercises to show an interesting property of force-free equilibria, that is that the current is proportional to the magnetic field. Can we give an example of uh, a force-free equilibrium? Well, we will give it for uh, in a relatively simple configuration, that is the one where there is cylindrical symmetry. So we will consider a situation where uh, the properties of the plasmas and the magnetic field are cylindrically symmetric, therefore they will depend on the radius, but they won't depend on theta. 
f r for which d over d theta is equal to zero. And in order to better describe this configuration, we will introduce e r, that is the unitary vector in the r direction, e theta. And we won't forget that the properties can still depend on z, where e z is out of the plane. Now one can show that uh, the equation curl of b equal to alpha b is satisfied by a magnetic field that has the following form. It has a component along the theta direction and a component along the z direction with b theta equal to b0 kr1 plus k square r square, where b0 is a constant uh, that has the units of a magnetic field, where k is uh, also a constant that has the units of 1 over length and sets the size, uh, the scale length of uh, this equilibrium in the radial direction. And bz is given by b0 divided by 1 plus k square r square. Well, with a magnetic field of this form, one can uh, readily evaluate the value of alpha, which is found to be equal to nu zero, jz over bz, where jz is the current along the z direction that can be evaluated uh, by considering Ampere's law and is equal to r k b z divided by 1 plus k square r square power 2. Well, how does uh, such a configuration look like? Let's imagine to consider a cylinder and look at uh, different radii, the direction of the magnetic field. In other words, we will uh, we will look uh, at the magnetic field lines uh, as they lie on these uh, nested cylindrical surfaces. And what we observe at small radii that the theta component is very small and therefore most of the magnetic field is in the z direction. Therefore, b will be in this uh, direction. At larger radii, this term will grow. And we will find something like that. At even larger radii, this will uh, grow furthermore up to the largest radii where b theta will uh, dominate over b z. In the effort, the magnetic field will be mostly in the direction of the theta direction. What we have just drawn is what is called the flux rope. The uh, MHD equilibrium, which is underlined, for example, uh, by this uh, uh, nice, beautiful structure that we can observe on the sun surface. In this region, in fact, uh, uh, the plasma beta is very small and the equilibrium can be well described by the force-free equations. And here, for example, you will have uh, a magnetic field that spiral around this uh, flux rope and uh, it's able to confine the plasma. We have given a quick look uh, at the uh, properties of uh, force-free equilibria. Now let's concentrate on force-balanced equilibria. In this case, the force-balanced equation is given by curl of B, 1 over nu 0, that is J, cross B equal to grad B. And, uh, well, to make some progress, we will use a uh, property of uh, vectors that uh, says that uh, 
this expression here is equal to b dot grad applied to b minus one half gradient of b square. This implies that the expression, the first balance equation that we have written here can be written as uh, the gradient of b plus this term here, b squared over 2 nu 0, equal to the term contained here. Well, how can we interpret this uh, equation here? Well, this will give us a balance between uh, this term here, that is the plasma pressure. A term here that we can interpret uh, as, uh, which has still the dimension of a pressure, and uh, that we can interpret as a uh, uh, pressure related to the magnetic field, associated to the magnetic field, the magnetic pressure. And a term which is present uh, if uh, the B field is curved, something that uh, we can interpret as the tension of the magnetic field lines. This is the general expression for an equilibrium. We may consider the simplest case, uh, as we have seen uh, in the previous slide, that uh, one of a cylindrically symmetric uh, system with a magnetic field of the form and the pressure given by a function of R. In this case, the first balance equation here can be written as uh, d over dr pressure, the sum of b t times b z in evaluating the b squared term, And uh, this term, field line tension term, becomes B theta squared over nu zero R. Now, by using Ampere's law, we can find also what is the expression of J associated with this magnetic field. We find, in fact, that J is equal to, to the sum of a component along theta and along Z, with J theta given by the derivative along the radius of bz and jz by this expression. As a matter of fact, here we have three functions, p, b theta and bz. Two of these functions can be sp specified arbitrarily. And once you have uh, specified two functions, the third one can be determined by using the force balance equation, of course, uh, subject to the appropriate boundary conditions. We have just derived the conditions under which uh, cylindrically symmetric plasma is in equilibrium. Now let's give a look at two cases, the Z pinch and the theta pinch, where the plasma cylindrically symmetric is in equilibrium. In the Z pinch, which is also called Bennett's pinch, one assumes that Bz is equal to zero specify actually one of uh, the uh, of the free function that we had found and therefore that uh, one specified that the plasma is confined by a magnetic field that is only in the theta direction by using the relation between uh, current and magnetic field that we have seen in the previous slide one finds that j theta is equal to zero in the therefore that j is only in the z direction. What we are therefore looking at is a configuration where there is a current that flows in the z direction 
and the plasma is confined by a magnetic field that is in the theta direction. And therefore, if you want, pinches the plasma in the z direction. This configuration we have uh, specified one of the two free functions, and therefore we are left uh, with one free function. We can therefore specify p or b theta or uh, jz. Okay, let's give a look at an example of uh, uh, z-pinch equilibrium. Simple example. The one where a uniform current passes through the plasma and the current is equal to zero outside the plasma. Therefore, a plasma where jz is equal to jz zero inside the plasma and is equal to zero outside the total current flow in the plasma is given by I, that is the integral over Jz over the full uh, plasma cross section, which is equal to pi A squared Jz is zero. Now, having this expression, one can derive uh, at uh, B theta. To do that, one can simply integrate this expression. Well, if you do these steps, what you obtain is that b theta, which is a function of r, is equal to this expression, which can also be written in terms of i, for r less than a and r larger than a. From the first balance equation, then one can derive the value of p and this has to be subject to the correct boundary condition that is the plasma pressure has to be equal to zero for r that is larger or equal to a from which one obtains p of r which is valid for r less than a well, let me say that studying the z-pinch is not a purely academic exercise. In fact, the first, among the first machines that were used to make fusion, well, the z-pinch was having an important role. And nowadays, the z-pinch still exists as a source of x-rays. The plasma, typically uh, plasmas made by heavy atoms, is uh, uh, compressed by using the forces that act on a z-pinch and uh, a huge burst of uh, x-ray can be is produced. An example is uh, shown here with uh, uh, the z-pinch at the Sandia National Laboratory in, uh, in New Mexico. So we have seen the z-pinch. There is another uh, simple configuration that we can analyze in this uh, cylindrically symmetric case, uh, that is the theta pinch. In the theta pinch, we impose that uh, the B theta component is equal to zero. And therefore, from this equation, we find that uh, J is in the E theta direction. If you want, the situation is reversed with respect to the Z pinch. Basically, we have current that flows in the theta direction and the magnetic field that is in the z direction. And the force balance equation becomes something very simple. where the contribution of the field line tension disappear as the magnetic field is straight. So here we get to the conclusion of the present module where we have derived the equation that describes the equilibrium in plasmas within the ideal MHD model. The first thing that we have observed is that uh, the B and J, the vector B and J, are tangential to isobaric surfaces. 
And then we have observed that uh, different kind of equilibria can be present in a plasma, the first free and the first balanced equilibria. We have given some example of these uh, uh, equilibria, the flux rope, the Z pinch and the theta pinch. Well, these are relatively simple uh, uh, scenarios, but let me say that they contain all the elements to look at the most complicated cases, such as the tokamak one that are actually used nowadays to confine plasma and reach the condition necessary for fusion reaction to occur.